Welcome to our review on ecosystems. Now, the first thing we actually need to do before we can really get stuck into this topic is to understand a few of the key terms that we're going to use throughout the next few videos. So the first one is the ecosystem, which is just all of the living organisms and the physical conditions in an area. If we're talking about the community, then that's just the organisms within the ecosystem. The habitat is the area in which the organisms live. If we talk about a producer, then we're talking about an organism that can make their own food by photosynthesis. And good examples here are things like plants and algae. If we talk about a consumer, these are the organisms that can't make their own food. So in order to get energy, they've got to eat other organisms. And so that's any animal you can think of, really. And then the last one is decomposer. And the decomposers are the ones that gain energy by feeding on dead or decaying matter. So I've given you an example of a food chain here, and I'm sure we all remember food chains that we've done lower down the school as well. So just going away from the very bog standard grass rabbit fox, I've gone with kelp, sea urchin, sea otter and then orca. Now, when we're given one of those food chains, it actually gives us a lot of information and it wouldn't surprise me if you were to get, for example, a six mark question here asking you to explain how the energy from the sun ends up in the orca, for example. So that could be one of those six mark questions. Now, what I've done at the bottom there is I've given you an overview of what we'd have to include. Now, what we'll find is no matter what the actual food chain, the main processes remain the same and you just insert the names of whatever organisms you're given in the question to make it relevant. But if we think about it, first of all, if we're asked about how energy gets from the sun, then the first step has to be talking about our producers. So we just need to say that plants take in energy from the sun and then just add a little bit more detail to move it up from that level one answer to the level three answer. So talk about the fact that it's absorbed by chlorophyll. Talk about the fact that it's used in photosynthesis and that it will make glucose. Throw in the word or symbol equations or both if you really want to for photosynthesis. That gives us our first bit there. That's how it's got from the sun into our food chain. So in our example with the food chain at the top there, that's how it gets from the sun into the kelp, which is a plant. Then it's got to move from the kelp to the orca. And we've got to explain how that's going to happen. So first thing, once our plants have made the glucose, it's not just going to stay as glucose forever. Our plants will change that glucose into other useful compounds, things like the carbohydrates and the proteins. And then that means that they're going to gain biomass. So our plants gain biomass as they're growing. And then when our animals come along and eat the plants, so for example, our sea urchin eats the kelp, then the biomass is transferred to the animals through that feeding. That's then going to continue along the food chain as the sea otter eats the sea urchin and as the orca eats the sea otter. So we find that energy being transferred from one to the next as the biomass is transferred from one to the next. One key point to note, though, if it ever asks you why you wouldn't have all of the energy from the sun transferred, just mention a process like respiration, which is how we lose some energy at each stage. So we mentioned the word biomass. When we're referring to biomass, we're talking about the amount of living material that's present. And basically, when we're looking at these food chains, we're looking to see the transfer of biomass. And that food chain is going to literally show us what organism eats what. Now, we do have arrows that are very important in our food chain because the direction of that arrow is going to show the direction of that energy flow or the direction of the transfer of biomass. So you've got to be really careful to get that the right way around. One other term that you could see used in conjunction with our food chains is this one called a trophic level. Now, wherever we're talking about a trophic level, it's a feeding level that shows the position of an organism in the food web or chain. So you will literally just have a look and you've obviously got your producers are your first trophic level, then your primary consumers are the next and so on. What you can see here then is an example of a food chain. So you can see we've got a grass, a rabbit and a fox that are in a relationship with each other. So the rabbit eats the grass and the fox eats the rabbit. The important thing here is the direction of the arrows, because the arrows show the direction the energy moves in. 
So you can see that the arrow is pointing from the grass to the rabbit because the energy goes from the grass to the rabbit and then from the rabbit to the fox because again that's the direction the energy moves in. The most common way that people throw away a mark on food chains is that when you're asked to write out a food chain the arrows go the wrong way like you can see at the bottom there. So what we're actually saying at the bottom is that the energy is going from the fox to the rabbit and then to the grass. And the reason that that's so wrong is because the arrows are pointing the wrong way. So if we're saying that the energy is going from the fox to the rabbits, what you're actually telling me is that if you go for a stroll through the countryside here in England, then you might see a whole host of rabbits hiding behind a hedgerow, just waiting for a poor innocent fox to walk by. At that point, the rabbits are going to launch themselves out from the hedgerow, attack the fox and then devour it, just leaving behind a pile of bones. Now, I certainly have never seen that happen in the countryside that I've walked through, and I'd be seriously concerned if you had. It just doesn't happen. Rabbits don't eat foxes, therefore the energy can't go from the fox to the rabbit. So make sure your arrows are always pointing in the direction that the energy is moving in. The very last level of complexity that we could see is where we're looking at all of the food chains within a given habitat. It's not like an organism will only appear in a single food chain. What we actually find is that those different food chains are linked together in what's called a food web. And you can see one on the screen there that just shows how all the different food chains link together. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now talk about food chains and food webs. You can recall the definitions for the key terminology and you can also describe what food chains actually show.